I've known James Brammer for seven days and 45 minutes, maybe about 30 seconds at this point. Well, you know, I am a big fan of James, so when I saw him with his white coat and he was just looking so glamorous, I automatically thought like, I need something to remember this by. I need like, I need like a souvenir. And so I thought, well, I don't really have a lot right now and I don't know when he's gonna leave. So I think that an autograph would be good. And I just ran and I got an expo marker and I gave it to him and I said, please sign my arm right now. And he did. And then I had a signature of James Brammer for the whole day. There's a lot of friction with this marker, but I think we turned out all right. This is my James Brammer signature. James seems like a very solitary man. I think that he, he is in a cloud of fame, but he is also all alone in his own head. And I think that being a celebrity has really gotten to him in that he just completely isolates himself when he's not around the paparazzi. My name is Zach Pye, and I've known James for four years through the film program at Ballard High School. My name is Lucas Bradshaw. I've known him since the beginning of senior year, and I'm also a fellow tennis player with him. Uh, my name is Lukas Pokorny. Uh, I know him since uh, September, and James is my friend, my fellow tennis player, yeah, classmate. Four years ago when I met James, it was not love at first sight. I, I had a lot of passionate hatred for the man. It went on this way for a, a long time. Uh, every couple of months it'd be like, oh wow, he's really great. And then it would be, oh my God, James, why would you do that to us? For sure, James is an interesting fellow and everybody knows that. He was the, he was the one person who talked to me here on Baller for the first time. And he brought me, you know, to my ping pong club and everything, so mm -hmm. James was my hero on Bell Art School. I guess he was the one talkative dude that was in fifth, that he made friends with everyone, and his sense of humor and the way he talked and what he talked about really was just so interesting, and he's just a hoot to be around. This is my uh, tennis brother. Is this an interview? This is my reality show. It's huh? a very important oh. Coach, what would you like to, there's an animal. What would you like to tell the American people about the elitism of tennis? Elitism of tennis? Yeah. Like, you know, tennis actually is not an elitism sport. It can seem that way, but all it takes is a racket and some balls and you can be anyone, so. Yeah. Yeah. It's not quite golf. All you need is a net, a court, racket, and balls. Right. And you know, they asked me earlier what it took to get on varsity, and I told them a certain amount of hard privilege, work, nepotism, and elitism. Hard work, discipline, sacrifice. <laughs> James, his mind's in the right place. He thinks he is the greatest tennis player ever, and he uses every advantage to him. Um, just yesterday, he was playing tennis with an umbrella in his hand. <laughs> And then, and then throughout that day, he had a blanket around, going around each court, cheering everyone on. So his mind's in the right place. I've had the privilege to have some practice of, practices with him by just me and him, and I've worked with him to get him better. And I can say that he is a decent tennis player, um, but his mind is in the level of the best tennis player, but he's not quite there. All right, boys, I'll show you how it's done. Yeah, the strong wins today. Strong wins. Are you aware of the awards James has won? Oh, everybody. 100%. Has. He yeah. tells us every day. He tells us every day. He's every shown day. us. I would love to add that uh, his film class is right after our period. So every time I hang out with him in the hallways after fifth period, he asks me, oh, you want to see my awards today? Oh, hi there. Well, I'll tell you, awards aren't everything. 
in life, but sure nice to have them. I like to look at this guy before I go to bed every night. And I think that it's really gratifying to receive a physical award because it just symbolizes all of the hard work and it's nice to have shiny things. If you're a weak person, you do not want James on your project. If you are a scared person, you do not want James on your project. Yeah. If you have a bad work ethic, you do not want James on your product. Any sign of weakness. Any sign of weakness is a bad thing, as Lucas has just mildly pointed out. But if you are not any of those things, you do want James on your project. This guy knows how to work. He is very creative, but you have to be diplomatic with him. He will try to be very controlling. He will try, but you have to remember He's not, he's not this big, bad, scary guy, you know? He's got a he can, dictator um, mindset. Yeah, dictator mindset, but his means aren't there. He's like growing into the Fidel Castro kind of thing. He just doesn't have all the nukes. Like, look at this injury. Look at this. Look at what, I, what, look at what they did to me. Look at this. There were multiple casualties. Multiple casualties. My left pinky, I can still feel it. Can I pet your elephant? Can I get a picture with it? I've known James Brammer since my first year teaching at Ballard High School. He was in my first advanced class that I had. As an underclassman, James was very different from the way he is today. He was very quiet and also very tidily dressed every day with slicked back hair, always sitting ramrod straight in his chair. At times when I'm working with my students, most of my students that is, I despair for the future of the film industry. But students like James come along and I think that there is quite possibly a future. Well, I think as an underclassman, I really tried to do a lot and I did a lot. And what really sustained me every day was I just kind of, I chugged the, the gumbo. If I met my freshman self right now, I give myself a big slap and then another slap. And then I would tell myself to work smart, not hard, you know, and that I wish I knew how to cheat the system earlier. I have no idea what just happened. Just a couple months ago, I was totally lost. I would quit my job, I didn't know what to do, <laughs> couldn't make any money. And then this, this small, short, petite, I would even say, dark-haired Jewish man came walking up to me in a woman's coat. And he said to me, Zach, did you know I have a small five-figure e-commerce business where I sell Legos to people on something called Mercari? And I was like, oh my God, not again. This bastard is doing something right. And it's, it's a good thing and he's making money and, he, and he's doing it better than me. A week later, I started my Mercari business where I sold <laughs> Legos to people online. Do you know what he said to me next week? Zach, there might be something going on in Eastern Europe next week. And uh, I've been buying a lot of Lockheed Martin stock. <laughs> what do you think I did next? This is our new technology. It's actually a robot dog. My man Bo, have you ever seen my racket? No, actually. What is that? Oh, you still want to buy some meth? I'd love to. <laughs> oh, fame is so difficult these days. It's so hard being famous. When wow. you think James Brammer, you do not think party animal. Mm -hmm. You don't think party coordinator even. You don't think he could throw on. You, mm -hmm. you just don't attribute it. 
one day he came to us three and he said, guys, New Year's Eve, I'm going to throw something called the Black Tie Rager. Everyone's going to get dressed up all formal. We're going to have champagne imported from, you know, France, wherever. And it's going to be great. And everyone's going to want to come. And it's going to be an event. We didn't take him seriously. We did not right. take him seriously. We thought he was going to tell maybe one, two people yeah. and then fail with all the rest. Off to week. Everybody in the hall was Everyone. talking about it. It was the most surprising thing I've ever seen. But in the end, the person who made the James change his mind was actually our teacher called Mr. Blozovic, who was explaining to him whole period that it's not a good idea. idea. Yeah. Not at all. I think that's where it really started like kicking off socially for James. That's where people started yeah. getting that name recognition. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I would say it's for all sure. because he's just not afraid to go out and <laughs> do some really weird things. Like yeah. say, hey guys, you want to get dressed up formally and go to my New Year's Eve party? And I don't know, high school? No one does that. James does that. <laughs> to quote James, he slithers around to everyone and gets into their nest. Thanks to this guy, I... I met a lot of people here on this, on this school uh, because he is literally connect, co connected to everybody. As Lucas said, he's like an awesome friend. Uh, he's great to spend time with, even though he's he might be pretty annoying, as I said earlier. But yeah, he's a pretty funny guy. Pay in dimes. They don't accept pennies though. Sometimes. Well, sometimes I'll find a few extra quarters, and that's how I make my weekly wage. We're about to go off to college, and I, I think lasting thoughts, since we're on a serious note, I'm kind of going to be sad not to see him anymore. I think we've all, in yeah, a way, I learned agree. our own lessons from James. We've definitely taught him a few things. I know sure. I have. Four years has been a long road. He wasn't always this way, and uh, yeah, I, I think I'm going to miss the guy. I want to like go on an authentic Irish fishing trip one day while listening to Celtic battle music. Yeah? Yeah. You know, I feel like someday I will become a Celtic warlord in the highlands of Ireland. Is this even U.S.? I don't know. I oh. got it here. So. Wow, he's a rich man. Okay. And then we have left 58 cents. What can I get for 58 cents? Nothing for you. Can I get anything for 58 cents? Yes. No. Again? Yeah, all the way you haven't been oh. on the <sighs> Yeah, yeah. This is a, the one day I forgot my deodorant. Can you believe that? Yeah, he always says to me, Zach, I hope to one day see you as a warlord in an African country. I mean, just, you know, calculus. Yeah, we got a Pentecost in period. Yeah, well, you know, it's kind of come to the point where, like, we'll be mid class and he'll ask if we have any questions, and I'd be like, what class are we in? You know, that's what it's come to. Let me just be clear. I, for over a year, I hated James with a passion. I think he earned, earned more than just uh, me liking him. I respect him in a lot of ways. Okay, you guys ready? Okay, I'm James Brammer, and I support this message.
Coming from behind. Alright. 